So Destiny, I have responded to one, I think I made one or two videos. So the title of this video is Destiny is done debating vegans, and then in parentheses it's because he keeps losing, I guess. Nice. The stuff he said about veganism. He's a Twitch streamer. He also does some like debating, quote unquote, um, where he talks to, you know, people on the internet. Uh, I think he talks to a lot of alt writers and apparently does a pretty good job uh, with that whole thing. I don't know. I haven't I haven't watched any of those, but he also uh, debates quote unquote vegans, but doesn't do a very good job, <laughs> which might be why he has decided to no longer debate vegans. Many of you know that the I... The real reason why I don't debate vegans anymore is because all of the arguments are more or less hashed out and because vegan philosophical arguments more or less boil down to these like in incredibly niche like meta-ethical levels that I don't think can be like properly explored. But we'll pretend it's because I keep losing, sure. Thanks, Elm Street. I am sympathetic to non-vegans. I know that it is not easy to go vegan. We are surrounded by um, convenience, you know, convenient animal uh, products and advertising, obviously making these products look super, super delicious. And to a lot of people, they are super, super delicious. Um, and often there aren't that many plant-based options, or if they are, they're quite expensive. Of course, you can live on rice and beans and spend very little, but I don't think many people want to do that. Look, most vegans don't want to do that. I don't do that. Things are much better than they used to be, but there are still many places uh, where it's it's difficult to find a nutritious and filling vegan meal. And sometimes it's just about taste, like I said, um, and that you know that can be challenging for people if you really really like meat or whatever. Um, XD nine months can't be aborted now, lol. Nice. Okay, cool. Well, it seems like she already almost fully agrees with my argument. That's good. All right. Particularly if you don't like like beans, you know, if you don't like beans, you're gonna have a pretty hard time uh, staying vegan and being healthy on a vegan diet, unless you really like mock meats, like I do, and can afford to purchase them and eat them a lot. So again, I'm sympathetic. However, there is a big difference between being a non-vegan and recognizing that you know what you're doing is is harmful, does have harmful consequences. That we're flawed people, we're flawed human beings who are you know working toward doing better, right? And doing what Destiny does, which is rationalizing and defending his choices by denying that they cause any harm. Destiny's argument basically is that instead I don't think I have ever in my life denied that eating meat causes a sort of harm to the environment. I don't think I've ever denied that ever. So we've already got like a pretty huge fucking strike one. Pretty fucking dumb point. But that's okay. We're only two and a half minutes in. Maybe it gets better. Destiny's argument basically is that instead of voting vegan, or, you know, essentially that it doesn't matter so much that he's not vegan, what's important is voting, voting to end animal agriculture. Yeah, but, like, I don't know if, like, I think that, like, I've platformed enough vegan arguments that, like, if you want to go vegan, you've seen the arguments and ideas for it. I think I've actually made a lot of people in my audience go vegan. Um, but, I, but personally, like, food and all of that is, like, a really big part of my life, and it would, I, like, I'll vote for policies for it, I'll advocate for people to vote for policies for it, but, like, it's a big, like, sacrifice for me personally to give up me. First, kind of ridiculous that he wants to enforce this on everyone else via the government, something that he's not willing to do himself. And second, is that- That was the dumbest point I've literally ever heard in my entire fucking life. Kind of funny that he wants to enforce it on other people that he's not willing to do himself. I'll do it myself. I just want everybody else to be forced to do it too. Like, let's say, for instance, I think cars are harming the environment. I'm not going to be riding around on a bike everywhere when everyone else is still driving a fucking car. I, that's just me. I mean, I, if, if you can find like a really good way to rope me into making huge personal sacrifices, then in the end of the day, don't make fuck all difference when no one else has to. I mean, go for it. Good luck. But like, fuck. It's actually realistic. There are no ballot measures to end animal agriculture. There are a few in various states to improve animal welfare in tiny, tiny, tiny ways, and those are important. But the real power that we have right now is via our dollar, is by purchasing plant-based options and not purchasing animal-based options. It's not ideal. It is far from ideal, but it's the best that we have right now. And while in some countries there may be significant measures that citizens can vote for, like taxing meat based on emissions, we're nowhere near that in the U.S., and Destiny is in the U.S. In the U.S., there is little difference in terms of support for farm subsidies between the two parties. Many Democrats are all about subsidies to farmers. Bernie Sanders, for instance, is Mr. Dairy Industry. Cool. The only real distinction is that some Democrats uh, like support smaller farms, which ironically can actually be worse for the environment. And there's no evidence that these farms result in better welfare. So if you're voting in the U.S., not only does your vote probably either not count or barely count due to districting and the Electoral College, but even if you are in a location where your vote does count, your choices are between two pro-animal agriculture parties. Damn, sounds like nothing's going to get done in regards to animal agriculture. Then thank you for telling me why I shouldn't waste my fucking time being vegan. Thank you, dog. I love Destiny. 
doesn't mean that you shouldn't vote. There are other policies that Republicans support that are literal crimes against humanity. I have no doubt that this period is going to be recorded as one of the most shameful in American history. But don't fool yourself into thinking that you are voting vegan, you know, by voting for Democrats in any substantive way. Again, the only real way to vote vegan today is with your dollar. But let's imagine that this weren't true. Let's imagine that there was actually a measure to end animal agriculture and it actually had a chance of passing. Maybe even that Destiny's vote could be the one to swing it. Would he vote for it? It's easy to say that you'd vote vegan when there's no chance of that happening. <laughs> but again, if it were actually on the ballot, if it were actually possible that Destiny would not be able to eat meat again, you know, tomorrow, would he actually vote for that? I, I have a really hard time believing that someone- What a stupid fucking argument. Why would you condescendingly laugh the entire time when you're trying to guess what exists inside my head? This isn't even a real argument. Oh, I don't think he would actually vote for it, given the opportunity to. Okay, dog. Who loves meat so much that says that they would suffer without meat. And I would like you literally already conceded in the beginning of the video that you suffer some sort of harm without meat. That, that plant-based alternatives don't taste as good, that things could be more expensive. Wait, you literally already conceded that at the beginning of the video. Suffering like quite a bit till I give up meat. Would actually vote for that. In order to rely on people voting against animal agriculture, I don't think we need them to be vegan, but I do think that we need them to be reducetarian, right? We, we need them to be people who can imagine themselves going vegan someday, right? Imagine themselves eating less and less animal products. That's not destiny. <laughs> you know, again, the way he- I literally drink soil. I literally replace all my breakfast with soylent. I don't, like, very rarely do I even eat a normal breakfast anymore. Why would you say that's not me when I'm literally doing that? less and less animal products. That's not destiny. <laughs> Again, the way he puts it, meat is an integral- I like how she laughs and she has no fucking idea like what she's even talking about, but okay. Part of his life, he will suffer without eating animal products. Why Which you already admitted at the beginning of the video. Should we believe him when he says that he will vote vegan? He may believe that, he may believe that he'll vote that way, but to me it's about as meaningful as people answering the trolley problem by saying that they sacrificed themselves by jumping in front of the train. Uh, Why is sacrificing yourself, like, on the same level as just not eating animal products? You can do it. Without dying. It's, it's I, uh, silly and it's a distraction from the issue. So like I said, the, the main power that we have today is... Okay, so... Okay by voting with our dollar, and Destiny denies this. So, like, my overall impact on, on, like, animal agriculture is gonna be, like, really, really, really small if I personally just become a vegan. If a million people eat one fewer animal each, then that's a million lives saved, and each person shares one millionth of the credit of that impact, right? So each person, on average, saves one animal. We don't seem to have trouble understanding shared culpability when it comes to something like a stoning, right? Or a mob of people are murdering somebody, right? No one is innocent. Each person is responsible. No one person is responsible. So why do we have such a hard time when it comes to what we buy and the consequences of what we buy. The caller who Destiny is talking to in the video makes the analogy to Destiny's opposition to transphobic jokes. You could say that one person not making transphobic jokes or slurs or whatever makes no difference, right, to the overall culture of trans. Oh God. Okay, so I could. I don't. If this is going to be like this whole argument can be shut down really easily. I'm going to try to be more charitable to her position, even though she's done absolutely nothing to deserve any charity. Um, her whole argument here is literally begging the question of thinking animal lives are worthy of moral consideration. I don't give a fuck if an animal dies or not. I don't care if I share one one millionth of the death of an animal. I've never given a fuck. I don't care at all. Now, we could say maybe one one millionth in terms of like increasing pollution or something that I do care about. So we'll, we'll mentally reframe her argument that way because what she's saying right now is really fucking stupid. But we'll, but we'll mentally reframe it that way since her current argument absolutely fucking fails. It's phobia. So why stop? Destiny's response is that a transphobic comment directly hurts somebody, whereas buying meat does not. By doing that, I think that I can cause like a measurable harm, like right there, that I like directly care about. Like that, that, that would be like a bad thing right there. Like I'd directly be engaging in either the direct harm of, of those people or leading like pretty directly to it. So the first problem is that it does make a difference, but it's one of probability. If you buy one package of bacon, that doesn't mean that the grocery store that you bought it from like automatically purchases one more package of bacon and that like you know one more pig is killed. Instead, there's a tipping point. If you buy a package of bacon, there is a certain probability that the you know manager of the butcher part, the meat person, whatever the hell you call those people. There's a certain probability that he or she will say, hey, we keep selling out of bacon early, maybe we should go ahead and order an extra case. And if you don't buy that bacon, there is a certain probability that the manager will say something like, hey, we're throwing out a lot of bacon, people aren't buying as much bacon anymore, maybe we should order one fewer case. It's a question of profit and loss, and profit margins in grocery stores are razor thin. Most grocery stores aren't run by infallible computer programs that keep track of all that, so there's also a probability of the manager noticing that they're selling out versus throwing out more than is economical, but that ultimately fits into the probability too. What we're talking about is hundreds of people going vegan and ultimately one person being responsible for for one fewer case of bacon being ordered. With every consumer action, we're talking about a small chance of making a much larger difference. The same is true of the stoning, right? There is a point in the stoning where one more rock made the difference between the person dying or not dying. If you're throwing rocks early on, you cause some bruising. If you're throwing rocks later on, the person's already gonna die from you know, kidney failure or whatever due to the accumulated injury. There was one single rock that crossed that threshold from something the person could have lived from to something the person 
is going to die from. In either case, we're talking about a small chance of making a big difference. Now, obviously, the problem though is like there's an uneven distribution of like risk versus reward, right? Like I could stop eating meat for the rest of my life, which would suck. I mean, I won't use the word harm, I guess, because that literally triggers vegans, although philosophically we say that's a type of harm. But I would say that would suck. That's like a measurable decrease of the enjoyment of my life, which I could do, but I could still do it, for to contribute to the one one thousandth or one one millionth of a chance that maybe somebody doesn't order, like, another, like I don't care. Like, that's dumb as fuck. No, what the fuck? That's not worth it at all. I wouldn't, I would never do that. I feel like there's a difference between, like, these, like, when you talk about, like, the transphobic things, here's, like, two differences. It's really hard to compare pollution to, like, general, like, responsibility things. Let's say that I have, like, a neighborhood that I walk in. Um, if I'm walking around in a neighborhood and I see that there's trash laying there, I'll always pick it up because it triggers the fuck out of me to see people, like, just throwing shit on, on the ground. It really triggers me. But, like... If I have, like, a small section, a small area, and I see garbage there, I can get rid of that garbage and make my small section, like, better. Because I have, like, direct control over this, like, thing. Much the same way that if I make, like, a transphobic comment to a person, there's, like, this area where I can have, like, a binary, like, good or bad, like, yes or no impact on a person's life, like, right then and there. But when everything becomes generalized, it becomes much harder to feel like I should make, like, big sacrifices or go out of my way to accomplish something. So let's say instead of, like... Let's say that when I go to pick up trash, let's say that trash is somehow redistributed to all parts of like the world or all parts of the country, right? Where if you pick up trash in your area, you're not going to see any difference at all, but everybody else can still throw trash around everywhere and now your area is just as evenly trashed. Like, it's like, well, fuck, I don't feel like it's motivated or, or is bought in to, to like change things now. Like this has to be like a structural or a systemic change. Like the idea that I'm going to go out of my way to, to, to do like a pretty big thing for myself when it has like a, a literally an unmeasurable impact or an immeasurable impact. Yeah, it's the tragedy of the common share. Like, uh, on all of society is like well fuck like this is like a big sacrifice for me and i'm literally making a, an infinitesimal change like why the fuck would i do this destiny i don't think this is a good analogy that's between seeing your impact and not seeing it no it's a difference between having a measurable impact versus an immeasurable impact right we can do it with driving cars the problem is that the, pr the problem is that like pollution which is all i care about is a generalized thing like pollution tends to be shared between all of the country if i drive my car i'm not just polluting the air around me everybody's driving cars all of the air is polluted stuff like that right it's the reason why like i won't leave my car around in my garage because that would fucking kill me but i will drive my car around because pollution is a shared problem between all people and me not driving anywhere is like a significant reduction of my life but it doesn't contribute at all to the overall problem of like pollution right The only way to, like, fix this problem is by making everybody roped into it. By either having, like, a, like, a, um, <clears throat> like, by having everybody roped into the problem uh, via legislation or some other, or massive cultural pressure or whatever, but, like, yeah. So you think it's along the same lines as when Train tried to tell you that you had to give away all your money in order to talk about helping those less fortunate systemically? Well, no, but it is similar in that, like, like the, the easiest argument to go back to is, like, I advocate for higher tax rates all the time because tax rates um, are really are, – because we have fucked up social programs in the United States. We don't have the money to um, – to, to, to fund them, right? But that doesn't mean that I personally am going to donate like half my money to the federal government. I'm not going to write in and pay extra taxes to the federal government. I don't think that makes me a hypocrite. Because I don't know if me throwing away, like if I give like 100 grand to the government, that's like a measurable fuck up of my life. Like it hurts my life a lot. But if I, um, but, but that 100K isn't going to do fuck all in the grand scheme of like the federal budget, right? It's not going to do anything. It's so, like, why would I throw away like that much money to, to, to cause like a reduction of my own satisfaction to really accomplish pretty much nothing? we don't blame that one person the person who threw the why does this off, just right? feel like a cop out and just leave, well it know. feels like a cop out because you are probably ascribing like a moral weight to the life of an animal and i'm not and it frustrates you that you can't argue that so when you try to reach into other things you realize that your arguments fall apart and then it just feels like i'm copping out but what i'm saying i mean like makes a reasonable sense i don't think that you need any type of mental gymnastics to understand what i'm saying right like i think the three biggest impacts you can do to, to not pollute the environment are not flying in an airplane not driving a car and not eating meat those are like the three biggest things you can do and if you if a one person did that it would have a severe impact on that person's life. I would never be able to travel to another state or another country for any events that I go to. I would never be able to travel to another state because I can't drive. Oh, not having kids as well. 
Um, and then like my day-to-day -day life is going to be pretty impacted because I'm not going to be able to consume any animal products or wear any animal products, right? Like this like fucks a lot of shit in my life up. And the overall impact on the environment is nothing. I'm one out of 330 million people, right? Like, like I don't think there's virtue in and of itself of being vegan. I don't think that's a virtuous position, but you, but a lot of vegans do. So then when they argue, they're like, oh, it feels like you're copping up because you're saying it doesn't matter. Well, not really. I just don't think there's a virtue in being vegan. Like vegan is a means to achieve an end. And that end is the reduction of pollution. If I go vegan and I don't really achieve a reduction of pollution, well, fuck, what the fuck? I don't give a fuck. Why would I go vegan then? That's stupid as fuck. Do you not prescribe moral weight to animal suffering? Fuck no. No, everyone else is innocent. Everyone else who threw a rock is innocent. You, know, there was you no need moral gymnastics to deny the moral value of an animal's life. Could you, could you watch a, hold on, could you watch a cat be tortured? Probably not. But firstly, whether or not you can or can't watch something doesn't make it moral or immoral at all, right? I think most, a lot of people probably couldn't even watch somebody like perform like surgery on somebody. Does that mean surgery is immoral? That's not a good litmus test for determining the morality of something. Firstly, secondly. What if I just answer that yes? And, and like I would totally shut down your answer anyway. Like your whole question is dumb. Um, that's we don't well unless you're like an intuition or something. We don't arrive at our moral prescriptions by by saying what you can or cannot watch. Like I can't watch people drag forks across certain types of plates. Does that make those like immoral actions? Like that's just that's not a good way to determine morality, right? Like that's like your meta ethical position. Well, can you watch it? Like. way to know ahead of time which rock would ultimately kill the person being stoned. In the same way, the vegan who acts as the tipping point to do something massive, like causing a company to shut down a factory farm because they've been in the red for too long, doesn't get all of the credit for the millions of lives saved. Because the actual effects are unknown, the credit or blame is shared, which means when you eat one fewer animal, you save one animal. And the same is true for the example- Oh man, how long is she gonna- I'm, I'm, again, I'm trying- whenever she says save an animal, I'm replacing that in my head with reduce pollution because her entire argument fucking falls apart if she doesn't- I, 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 maybe she just has no idea who the fuck I am. I don't know why she's responding to any video I've made, but okay. Well, that Destiny used to rationalize the difference. When someone uses a transphobic slur or tells a transphobic joke, Harm is not guaranteed. There's a certain probability that somebody who doesn't agree with that will hear it, and there's even a certain probability that a trans person will hear it and be hurt by it. But there's also a probability that a trans person will hear it and won't be hurt by it. There's also a certain probability that this will be the tipping point and lead to someone's suicide. You don't know the actual effects, not when making a bigoted joke and not when buying bacon. But you do know... The, the making the transphobic comments has nothing to do with the effect on a person. It has to do with how localized the harm is. If I make a transphobic comment, that is one comment coming from me, going to another person, or going out to a platform that is in my local area, and I cannot have that completely, right? Like, right now, if I wanted to, like... If I wanted to not be transphobic at all, if I don't want to be transphobic at all in any way, size, shape, or form, then none of the people that I interact with have to deal with transphobia for me, right? But like, and I think that's like a good, I think that's like a measurably good impact in somebody's life, that people could like surround themselves with non-transphobic people, and that's good. If I decide not to pollute, you still have to deal with a whole bunch of fucking pollution. You can't surround yourself by people that don't pollute and then not deal with pollution anymore unless you go live on like a deserted island somewhere, right? Like because that harm is so generalized and not local, there is no way to escape that harm that everybody else is causing, which is why I think that the only way to effectively deal with it is on a systemic level. the statistical effects and in both cases they are bad because our knowledge is imperfect all that we can do as people who want to do good who want to be ethical is go by prop if humans would get rid of animal agriculture tomorrow that would do nothing to help climate change because crop-based agriculture would still have an impact there is no green agriculture there can be green industry and transportation no because animals consume a fuck ton more isn't it like 30 calories of consumed food or or maybe it's way more for every one calorie you get out of like a cow no the the, the thing is that if we eat plants directly it's a more it's more efficient in terms of like energy and everything and in terms of pollution than feeding a whole bunch of shit to a cow and then eating the cow right we'd have to kill all the cows well they would die because we'd stop breeding them cows only exist because we make so fucking many of them right mm -hmm. we should kill them <laughs> Good for the environment. If Death stands up debating this person, I don't think that there's like anything to debate this person on.
probability of harm. And that's just as true for a bigoted joke or a slur as it is for buying bacon. So this is when it gets super funny. Destiny basically claims to have done so much for veganism that he doesn't have to go vegan because he has platformed so many vegans by debating them on his channel. And that so many of his viewers have gone vegan because of that. I think that like I platformed enough vegan arguments that like if you want to go vegan, you've seen the arguments and ideas work. I think I've actually made a lot of people in my audience go vegan. You know, everyone hates a hypocrite, but I think even worse than that is a hypocrite who claims other people's virtue, their moral virtue, as their own. This is what Destiny is doing. Let's say that I convinced Bob to go vegan. Well, now I can eat meat. It all cancels out because I convinced Bob to go vegan. It's the same. I would never make this argument. What the fuck does that mean? Like, oh, well, actually, I bully a lot of trans people in real life because I've made other people not transphobic on my stream. I would never give an argument like this. This is the dumbest shit I've ever fucking heard in my entire life. Wait, what? Same as me being vegan. This was in response to the guy saying, well, you're a public figure, so shouldn't you do like what you can for like veganism? I think I have. I think I've done what I can. I think I platform arguments. Personally, I drink Soylent. I replace some of my meals with Soylent. I think that I probably consume less animal products than most Americans now as a result of that. I still probably consume way more than like obviously like vegetarians or whatever, sure. But um, I'm not trying to like, claim your... I'm not trying to like claim your like... Uh, your virtue, because I don't even believe in virtue as a concept. And Bob continuing to eat animal products. But as for Bob, sorry Bob, all of the credit for you being vegan goes to me, because I'm taking it, because I convinced you to go vegan. I've stolen this Bob's literally sounds like virtue signaling, like, oh, look, I made him a vegan, so now I get to take the credit for being vegan. I get the virtue. Like, what the fuck? What is this argument? Destiny, she's equating the guy telling you to promote veganism by going to vegan with going vegan because it's virtuous. Yeah, I guess virtue because he is still responsible for the death of every single animal that I eat because I only justified not going vegan because he went vegan. Now there are cases where this could actually work. You know, let's say that Bob does not care about animals, does not care about the environment, does not care about human beings. He would never go vegan in a million years, but I am like, hey, I will pay you a thousand dollars a month to go vegan. That's legit. Bob didn't go vegan for any ethical reason. He is only vegan because I am paying him. He gets no credit for that. He knows he gets no credit for that. I'm not stealing his virtue because he has none. The problem is that in Destiny's case- This is some weird deontological shit that I don't fuck with. I don't understand this getting credit for being virtuous. I don't, I don't care about any of this. I don't know what the fuck this has to do with anything. Not the second example. It's the first one. He's not paying psychopaths to go vegan. He's leeching off the virtue of his viewers as an excuse not to go vegan. You can't convince people to be vegan because it's the right thing to do and then take all of the credit for their choice to do so. They aren't going vegan so that you can continue to eat animal products and feel good about it. They're going vegan to address their own harm footprints. Right. It's absolutely a good thing to educate others and to help them change their habits and people will thank you for it. And I'm sure that Destiny platforming these vegans has encouraged people who follow him who watch his stuff to go vegan themselves and that's great but you can't then use their virtue as justification to do harm because they did good it's it's a lot more complicated than that and let's be real here if anyone deserves credit for you know convincing these viewers to go vegan it's the people who are debating against destiny it's the vegans who are debating against destiny not destiny for having and losing these debates he's not losing these debates on purpose right and he's not having these debates for free out of the goodness of his heart he is making money doing this and if he's being honest about it he doesn't think he's lost these debates <laughs> otherwise he would concede defeat and stop justifying his meat consumption so that's it really you know again i am sympathetic but i'm much less sympathetic when people are making arguments like this you know destiny is not stupid um i think he is being defensive and he doesn't want to admit that what he's doing is incredibly harmful because he wants to admit that right there's, there's nothing unique to this this is why we continue to see this because no one wants to admit that about themselves and i get that people are really 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 tied to food i'm not gonna say that i think it's kind of sad i mean it's fucking food you know there's lots of tasty food out there your taste buds will change you can at least try for a short period of time you know i know he said that the mockings are terrible i recognize that a lot of them are for a lot of people i'm not gonna pretend that tofurkey kielbasa is good i love it but i realize that i have really weird tastes and also i've never been a huge fan of meat i think it's pretty common for people who go vegetarian or vegan a lot of us are never big meat eaters certainly when it comes to like red meat and stuff like that but it's definitely worth a try for anyone in the privileged position to be able to do it to be able to reduce their, their meat consumption i think it's worth a try to at least see if your taste buds can change enough that you can eat less animal products without it being such a sacrifice particularly for destiny as he says you know he has all of this influence well it would be usually influential for him to kind of practice what he preaches you know at, and again, he's saying that it doesn't really matter, but he does recognize that animal agriculture is bad. I think it would be hugely influential if he were supporting that less and less. And again, if voting matters so much, then it's really important, I think, that he put himself in a position psychologically to, again, imagine himself not eating animal products, right? Let's see. Okay. There's like one minute left. I don't care. Okay. That was worse than I thought it would be. I think she, she must have missed like every single part of the video where I said I didn't give a fuck about like saving animal lives. I guess she didn't catch that literally anywhere, but okay. You think she values animal lives more than human lives? Um, no, I think most vegans will say that they value like a human life more than an animal life, but you can still like. How much more do you think it costs if you had to guess a month? 
to be a vegan versus a non-vegan? 50 Wait, bucks? There's been bucks? a lot of studies that, like, well, I don't know, I saw some shit in chat where it's actually cheaper to be a vegan. Somebody linked that shit, but I'm pretty sure it's only cheaper to be a vegan if you, like, eat, like, the yeah. shittiest, like, rice and beans, like, all fucking more, day. Right? Yeah. So if you assume it's, like, 100 or 200 bucks more a month, wouldn't you be much more virtuous to be taking that money that you were spending on vegan food and instead doing it to save lives? Um, I don't know. I think so. Are vegans who own, like, animals, like... Is that immoral? Do they say that or no? Um... Say it's immoral to what? Like, own animals? Like, if you're a vegan. Oh, I don't know. Vegans are mixed on that, I think. <laughs> you could use that. You save up all the money of not being vegan for a few years, you can evict the grandmother for free. That's a fucking amazing value. <laughs> Save up, dude. Do you gather speculation that most vegans were never big meat eaters to begin with? Oh, uh, maybe, I don't know. Didn't you agree that reducing suffering and morality are synonymous? No, what? I don't believe in meta ethics. This was your only argument against that smart science, dude. I don't understand. I don't know what debate you're talking about. How are you? I'm very what do you think about sugar? It's fucking horrible. We should probably get rid of it completely from society. Can you get food down? Fuck me, dude. Only if we can get some meat. <laughs> Honestly. So let me just ask this. Can you give me no, a yes or no? Stop asking if that's what I'm saying. I'm I can't ask you a question to clarify your statement?